What's going on guys? Today I'm finally going to get around to doing the review of my Titanium 125 I keep talking about. We're going to weld together some angle iron. We're going to try out some thin stuff. We're going to see how well it does there. And then finally we're going to weld some pieces together and try to break them. See if these welds are strong. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about of what I genuinely feel about this welder. Check it out. So this right here, this particular application, I think is exactly what this welder is made for. It's a semi-thick material given this welder's capacity. It's eighth inch angle and we're doing a fillet weld. I think it laid down pretty evenly and I'm pretty sure it's plenty strong for whatever you're going to be doing with eighth inch angle anyway. Overall, I think doing this type of stuff, this welder is perfect for this application. It's not super clean. I would expect DC output to be a little bit cleaner than this. But when you run the wire wheel on it, it cleans it up pretty nice, honestly. So, let's talk about this welder a little bit. Obviously, instead of just having a min-max like you'd have in one of the cheaper ones, you have a scale, because this is an inverter. It's actually able to vary the amperage that goes out to the gun. So, you have a lot of options. You're able to try different things. If your welds don't look quite right, you're able to change them. I love how small and lightweight this welder is. It's only like 15 pounds or something like that. I have a 110 plug-in welder at work that's over 80 pounds, so I love this. There's two disadvantages to that. One, you can only fit one pound spools in here. The other disadvantage is you only have a 30% duty cycle. So on one of the black box Chicago's, it's 20%. What that means is if you're welding for 10 minutes, you can only weld for two minutes and the rest of the time it has to be sitting and cooling down. So 30% isn't great, but that's only at full power. So if you turn it down, you're able to weld longer without letting it cool, but still 30% isn't great. But it's one of the trade-offs having a really lightweight machine, which is super convenient and I actually really do still love it. And then a feature that I've never had on a welder, it has a cold feed. What that means is when you're running the wire through here that goes out to the whip, without pulling the trigger, you're able to just hit this button and it will feed the wire all the way to the end of the gun. That is super convenient. Like I said, I've never had a welder with this feature, so I'm actually really happy about that. Let's get back to the welding. When I'm welding the thinner stuff, you definitely wanna be down on the lower threshold. So between A and B is just fine. And then again, I'm gonna dial my wire speed back just a little bit to about four. It doesn't have to be much lower than that. Although my welds did end up being kind of blobby, this is about right for doing this type of stuff. My first pass on the really thin stuff, I ran it on about power level C. And uh, you can see we were getting some pinholes here. The whole time I was fighting this top piece melting back away from me, I wasn't entirely happy with it. And of course it looks really blobby. So I just turned the welder down and I tried it again. It's a little bit cleaner now, but you'll see that it was still melting away. I was fighting it the whole time. Now I'm not gonna complain too much because this is 55 thousandths of an inch, these pieces. It's less than a sixteenth of an inch. So overall, the welder did just fine given how thin this material is. But it just goes to show that just because you have a machine that is really variable, more so than the 90 amp or one of the other welders, it's still not gonna do all the work for you. You're gonna have to really work to weld thin stuff like this. So we have our fillet weld here, extremely happy with that. Thin stuff, a little bit less happy with it, but when you're welding something that thin, you really can't expect too much. We have this guy here, which we're gonna go ahead and try and break pretty soon. It's gonna break, but we're just gonna really observe how it breaks. For this weld strength test, we're gonna be using a 20 ton hydraulic press. 
Previously, I had done this with a hammer, and I'm pretty sure that's how I broke my vise, and I don't feel like doing that right now, so the press will do just fine. So if you paid close attention, you can see the piece that I was using as a support is now seriously bowed out. And uh, it's not flat anymore. So this actual weld is definitely stronger than the piece I'm using to support it. I might have to try something different here. When I welded this piece on, it was perpendicular to this right here. But as you can see, in my efforts to try to break this weld, it's just taken the metal along with it. I thought this weld was going to break, to be completely honest with you, and it really doesn't seem to want to. So in the process of trying to break this weld, I've really just ended up with a big pile of twisted metal. I mean, that had a gusset on it. It actually broke that weld that wasn't even attached to the piece. I know that's just leverage, but this is 316 steel we're talking about, by the way. But, I have still not been successful at breaking this weld. I mean, that's almost flat. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's a strong weld. Let's just move on. So, I was fully ready to do a review where I just sang the praises of this welder because while I was making my workbench, I was overall very happy with it. I really liked it. I love the way it looks. I love how light it is. But there's a few things I don't like about it. First of all, it's got a cartoonishly short whip. It's only five feet. So literally you could be using the gun and touch the welder at the same time. That's not real good. You're only able to fit the one pound spools. Now, if you have one of the black box Chicago's, the 90 amp or the 125, which are the exact same welder, we'll talk about that later. You're able to fit a 10 pound spool in those. So you're able to fit way less wire. I do love that it's adjustable, but you're really only dealing with 125 amps, so the adjustability only gets you so far. But the worst thing, I was going through my garage and I was looking at a welder that I did with my 90 amp when I only had my 90 amp welder. And I thought, no, the 90 amp doesn't weld that good. So I did a comparison. So we have two different welds here from two different welding machines. One of them, the Black Box Chicago, the one you can get for 87 bucks sometimes. And the other one is the Titanium 125, which is more than double that price. Can you guys tell which one came from which welder? Do you even want me to tell you? This one right here, that's the 90 amp. And this is the Titanium 125. Now granted, I have a lot more miles with this welder, but should it be that close, honestly? So at the end of the day, the Titanium 125, I do like the welder. I do plan on keeping it around, but is it really better than the 90 amp? Maybe a little bit, but is it worth double the price? I don't think so. But one thing I will mention, I still have the 90 amp because ultimately I'm not sure if I would have a YouTube channel without that thing. That basically made Strange Garage from the start, but that little Flux 125, the Chicago 125, you haven't seen any videos of that recently, have you? That's because it's not any better than 90. That's, I just gave it away. I plan on keeping this around. I'm gonna get to know this welder a little bit better because I do think it's a good welding machine. But if you already have the 90 amp Chicago or the 125, should you upgrade to this? I don't really think you should. It doesn't weld any better. It's not more intuitive. It's lighter, but if you're just gonna use it around in the shop, it's not really doing you any favors. Anyway, I probably asked more questions than I answered, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.